Hi everyone, on this episode of Q&A with Dr. Cliff, we're gonna talk about the five most common household products and foods that I see in my clinic that are causing toxicity and poison problems in dogs. So stay tuned. Great, thanks for joining me. The first toxin that I see, or the first food that causes poison problems is chocolate. Now, most people realize that chocolate is poisonous, is poisonous to dogs, but they don't really understand what the problem is. Chocolate, although it has a lot of fat and sugar, and that alone can cause things like vomiting, diarrhea, and pancreatitis to dogs, um, it has a chemical similar to caffeine called theobromine. Now, it depends on the type of chocolate. Theobromine is more seen in a greater quantity in darker chocolate, so like 70, 80% chocolate, um, in baker's chocolates and some of the premium chocolates as well. It only takes something like one ounce of baker's chocolate, uh, be it the powder or the squares, to cause toxicity in a 50 pound dog. The issue with theobromine is it kind of acts like a stimulant. And what it ends up doing is your dog will start to vomit, it'll have tremors, its heart rate will skyrocket, its temperature will skyrocket. It can even result in seizures, coma, and without treatment, unfortunately, even death. So if your dog eats chocolate, you need to call your veterinarian right away. Um, what your veterinarian is going to end up doing is first they're going to go online, they're going to Google it and figure out if the actual weight of your dog compared to the amount of chocolate they ate is going to cause a toxicity issue. But the treatment basically is they induce vomiting to get rid of any chocolate that's still left over in the system. They force charcoal down the throat and into the stomach of the dog to help absorb some of that theobromine. And then depending upon the severity, they're gonna admit your dog for several hours, for several days potentially on IV fluids and supportive care. But the most important thing is keep the chocolate away from your dogs. And, and it's actually happened to me where someone gave me a present that I didn't realize had chocolate in it. It was wrapped up like a Christmas gift and I put it in my bag and I came home from work and my dog found out that it was chocolate and I found out the hard way. I had to rush the dog to my own hospital and, and treat accordingly. So chocolate's a big one, especially during the Halloween and Christmas season. Please be careful and call your veterinarian if you think that there's a problem. The second toxin that I commonly see is a sugar replacement called xylitol. Xylitol is um, very, very common these days because of people with diabetes or people worried about kind of a high glycemic index foods, basically foods that are too sugary or have too much carbs in it. Xylitol is a very safe, for people, a very safe, basically like an artificial sweetener. The problem is, is for cats and dogs, xylitol tricks the body into thinking it took in a lot of sugar, essentially. And what ends up happening is a dog that ingests xylitol and it tastes really yummy to them. So they will eat sort of sugar-free gums and sugar-free candies and sugar-free ice cream, any of those things with xylitol in it. It tricks the brain and it tricks the pancreas into thinking that they got a load of sugar. And then the pancreas creates insulin. Insulin normally naturally drops our sugar levels. So these dogs end up going into a very, very serious case of low blood sugar, or what we call hypoglycemia. They will become weak. They will also have tremors. They will start to kind of walk around drunk. Um, it can actually cause a insulin toxicity coma, um, and it can also be fatal. And then depending upon the treatment, if you don't get treatment fast enough, it can cause irreparable liver damage. So. Again, if you think this has happened, you need to call your veterinarian right away. Depending upon the timing, they're gonna induce vomiting, they're gonna give charcoal to absorb the xylitol, and they're gonna give supportive treatments, including intravenous dextrose or sugars to keep those sugar levels elevated. But it's much, much easier if you just keep these things away from your pet and realize that they are a common ingested toxin that dogs and cats tend to get into. The third most common toxin I see are grapes and raisins. And everyone is kind of aware of this, but again, they don't really know why. And basically grapes and raisins contain a chemical that results in kidney damage. And not all dogs are susceptible. We don't know as veterinarians 
between one dog or another, even if it's the same breed, if they're gonna be toxin, or uh, if they're gonna be susceptible to toxins or not. So basically, a single grape can be fatal to your dog, and you don't know if it's gonna be sort of the situation. Now, signs you're gonna see, but please don't wait for these signs to, to occur before you talk to your veterinarian, but signs that you're gonna see are vomiting, abdominal pain. Because it causes kidney damage, it actually causes extreme ura urination, or what we call polyuria, weight loss, anorexia, and eventually, if it doesn't get treated in time, it does, again, cause death. I have actually had several cases at my clinic where people didn't realize or they thought their dog was fine, their dog ate a, a little box of raisins or a couple of grapes, and they didn't realize that the, the symptoms are delayed. It can be delayed up to 72 hours, and by the time the signs show up, the damage is already done. And unfortunately, in these cases, it was a week later, the dog started to vomit, the dog wasn't eating, they were losing weight. They basically looked really, really sick. We ran blood work, showed that the kidney enzymes were through the roof, kind of did a history, asked more questions, found out that there was a raisin, a box of raisin ingestions. We tried treatment, but we knew that the chances were pretty low that we were gonna be able to save this dog. And unfortunately, a couple weeks later, it did pass away of, of kidney failure. So the main thing to get from this is, of course, keep these things away from your dog. Don't let them leave, don't leave them out on the table for them to grab. Um, be careful, uh, you know, if there's little raisin boxes in your kid's lunchbox. But if you see it happen, don't wait for symptoms to occur. Assume the worst, assume your dog is sensitive and call your veterinarian immediately. Even if it's an emergency hospital in the middle of the night, do not wait until the next day. Every minute counts in saving your pet's life. The fourth most common toxin I see at my hospital is onion ingestion. So simple onions, even kind of garlic and leeks, but basically things in the onion family. They have these disulfides, these chemicals inside the onion that cause oxidative damage to the red blood cells. So dogs don't have the enzyme to digest these disulfides. And what ends up happening is it causes these lesions on red blood cells that we can see under the microscope called Heinz body lesions. And basically the body recognizes that these red blood cells are damaged and destroys them because they wanna make new red blood cells. But depending on the amount of onion that your dog ingests, and it doesn't have to be a lot, some dogs are more sensitive than others, even onions in pizza, onions in certain tomato sauces, Chinese food sometimes have enough onion, even some baby foods actually have onion in it and enough to cause toxicity and poisoning in dogs. So what ends up happening, the body recognizes these red blood cells are damaged and destroys them. You're gonna get weakness in your dog, pale gums. The gums will actually become like this kind of muddy, brownish red color, even a grayish brown color. Um, and as the red blood cells are destroyed and the hemoglobin goes into the kidneys and into the urine, you'll actually get this strange kind of dark, even wine colored urine uh, called hemoglobinuria. Um, but again, the main thing is, if you see this happen, or if you think this has happened, call your veterinarian immediately. It's some of the similar treatments of vomiting, charcoal, IV fluids, but depending upon the damage to the red blood cells and the destruction of red blood cells over the next handful of days, and the response that that dog's body will have in trying to create more red blood cells, they may even need to give your dog a blood transfusion to get it over the hump in time to keep it alive and safe. This is a condition that, although very rarely, can become fatal, um, but it's certainly a very painful and expensive uh, condition to treat. So please keep onions away from your dogs and don't feed them anything that, any scraps of food or any human food that may have even the smallest bit of onion in it it can become very, very dangerous. The last toxin and poison that I see is not a food, but it's a common poison for rats and a common poison for ants and other insects that your dog can actually get into. So when we kill a rat with rat poison, we're using basically blood thinners, things called like uh, warfarin or coumarin, what we call rodenticides. And we're basically causing these rats to bleed internally on their own and then they die that way. It's a pretty horrific way. I think there's some much better ways to get rid of rats and mice if you have them in your house. 
but certainly it is a danger for dogs. Now, some dogs will actually eat these rat poisons and these mouse baits, but much more commonly, especially if you have a terrier breed, like a Jack Russell Terrier, Silky Terrier, Yorkie Terrier, any of those terrier breeds, those are ratting dogs and mouse hunting dogs. And they'll actually grab and ingest enough mice or one or two rats that contain this toxin in them and they're essentially poisoning themselves by eating these by eating these rats and they'll show the similar signs they'll start to bleed internally they'll bruise they'll have bleeding from the gums even their eyes will become bloodshot very very dangerous potentially fatal and the whole vomiting and and like inducing vomiting to get rid of the toxin and using charcoal to absorb it doesn't quite work as well because they've, in, they've eaten the rat, but instead we actually have to give them injections of vitamin K, which kind of counteracts that, that rodenticide, that poison. But very, very dangerous, very, very painful. And of course, it's not great for the rat or the mouse either. So try and find a much safer and more humane way of getting rid of the, the rat and mice in your, in your house. Now, the other issue that I mentioned are insecticides. Things like those little ant bait traps that you may put under the sink or behind the toilet or in your garage. Well, some of those things are chewed up by dogs and some, of, some dogs like, they like the taste of it and other ones just like chewing new things and they like kind of the plasticky feel to it. Well, those insecticides are, call, are called organophosphates. And basically what they do in insects is they shut down and they cause a imbalance to a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And the similar thing sort of happens to dogs. Now dogs aren't as quite as susceptible to it, but if they get into enough of this stuff, you will end up having to bring your dog as an emergency basis to the veterinarian. Now the symptoms, and again, please don't wait for these symptoms to show up, but the symptoms are a couple of things. I remembered the acronym SLUD, S-L-U-D, when I was in vet school. Salivation, so they'll have saliva, they'll drool a lot. Lacrimation, which means tearing a lot. Urination, so they'll pee uncontrollably. And defecation, they'll have bowel movements, they'll have diarrhea. The other thing that the veterinarian will notice is the heart rate will be bottomed out. It'll be half what it normally is and the dog will be very, very weak from it. Now there are some very sort of readily available at all animal hospitals. They have reversing agents or antitoxins for these organophosphates. But if this goes on long enough and you don't get to the veterinarian quick enough, this can cause seizures, tremors, coma, and it can become fatal. So all of these things are very, very common. I unfortunately see them at my hospital quite often. And the, the, the name of the game here is quick sort of attention. Call your veterinarian immediately. Do not please wait for symptoms to show up and get these things treated as fast as you can and keep these products away and sort of out of reach from your pets. Especially be aware of the ones that can climb really, really high because they will grab these things when you're not expecting it. So thanks for watching. I hope this was very, very useful. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to share this useful information with your friends. And of course, as always, if you have questions, if you have cases you want me to look at um, or information that you'd like me to talk about, just leave a comment or find me on Instagram or, or via email. Any of those ways is fine. Last but not least, as always, please be kind to pets. Thank you.